In the third week of March, the annual Rice Harvest Festival was organized in the state of Rio Grande do Sul by one of the largest rice production cooperatives in Brazil. The cooperative is run by the Landless Rural Workers Movement of Brazil, one of the most significant social movements in Latin America. The MST has been in the forefront of a unique movement to take over unused land, render it productive and provide livelihoods and dignity to thousands of families. It has brought about a massive shift in social relations in Brazil. The MST was also one of the movements that has stood firm by former President Lula da Silva as he was persecuted by Brazilian state over the years. After his acquittal and as Brazil heads to a significant election, mobilizations are taking place across the country to bring about an alternative to the far right represented by President Jair Bolsonaro as well as other systemic forces. Zoe Alexandra of People's Dispatch talks about the work of the MST, what it has brought to Brazilian society and the mobilizations around the potential presidential candidacy of Lula da Silva. Hello and welcome back to People's Dispatch. Today we're going to talk about Brazil and the people's movements on the ground in Brazil that are working to rebuild the country and build a new project for Brazil. Annual Rice Collection Festival. This takes place in the southern state of Rio Grande do Sul uh, on the settlement of Santa Rita. And it is in uh, organized by the um, Agricultural Livestock Production Cooperative um, this is one of the largest uh, agricultural production cooperatives in Brazil. Um, they're the largest producer of organic rice in the country. And actually, the MST, which runs this agricultural cooperative, the movement of the landless rural workers, is the largest producer of organic rice in Latin America. Um, they held their annual festival to, um, to begin uh, the harvesting of this organic rice. Uh, it's a very important moment uh, for the MST, for the country. It's always a moment of great celebration of not only the start of the harvest season, which for centuries is a, is a moment to be celebrated uh, in many communities across uh, the world, but it is also a moment of recognition of what the movement has been able to achieve. So the Landless Rural Workers Movement has been organizing for over 30 years, organizing uh, people without land uh, to take unproductive land that is not being used um, where the owners or the people or the um, the property holders of this land have in somewhat uh, violated um, a certain clause of the constitution which says that all land must be productive, that it cannot um, endanger the environment, that slave labor cannot take place, and that of course all the owners must pay their taxes. And so the Land is for a Worker movement has been working for the past couple of decades uh, to retake this land and make it productive again, not only to produce food, but also to give a life and a life of dignity to all these families, hundreds of thousands of families that don't have access to land. Brazil is one of the most uh, unequal countries in not only the, the region of Latin America and the Caribbean, but also the world. And it has one of the largest disparities in terms of those that own land and those that don't own land, meaning that a large amount of land is concentrated in the hands of very few. And even though agricultural production, family farming is a very big aspect of a Brazilian economy and of sustaining the Brazilian people, uh, many people are excluded from this. And so the Landless Rural Workers Movement has been fighting for decades for the um, people's land reform. And they're fighting not only to be able to have this land and to live on it and work this land, but also to make healthy food. And that is why when they celebrate this um, rice harvest festival. It's organic rice they're harvesting because the this movement is fighting uh, so that all people in Brazil, both in the countryside and in the cities can have access to healthy food, can have access to you know, conditions to survive because Brazil, like many other countries in Latin America and across the world is relies a lot on agrotoxins, on pesticides in order to grow their food. And actually under the government of far-right president Jair Bolsonaro, uh, over 500 pesticides that were previously illegal um, were made uh, able to use, he uh, made them legal. And this means that the Brazilian people are dealing with even higher levels of chemicals in their food, of poisonous chemicals that are very, very bad for their health. And so in this sense, the Landless Rural Workers Movement has been fighting this by creating, by producing healthy food, by distributing it to the communities that need it, 
Um, during the pandemic, uh, the movement organized mass amounts of uh, food donations to poor communities, both in the countryside and the city. They organized many community kitchens where hot food was distributed uh, to the people in the cities, to homeless people, to people who lost their jobs, to anyone who needed it. And so in this moment, they're celebrating for the first time in three years, this uh, rice harvesting festival. It's a, it's a moment of great victory and it's a moment of uh, and necessary to, rec to recognize the achievements of this movement that has really held up Brazilian society. And so concurrently at the same time that this um, rice harvest festival, which is so symbolic and so important, uh, was taking place the next day, um, there was a, another large celebration that took place in Paraná, just to the north of Rio Grande do Sul. And at, it was at another very, very large agricultural production a uh, settlement of the MST, which is called Eli Vive, and that is in Londrina. Londrina in Paraná is uh, the largest area of um, that has been uh, taken back by the people for agrarian reform in, uh, in Brazil. Um, there's over 501 families settled in this region, and all of them are engaging in family agricultural, in uh, agroecological production and making producing products such as milk, cheese, da other dairy products, uh, harvesting food, making uh, alcohol, even harvesting beans, rice, so many different things that are so necessary to support the people. And so this weekend, um, after the Organic Rice Festival, uh, Lula da Silva visited this uh, agricultural settlement along with other leaders from the MST, João Pedro Stegile, e João, João Paulo Rodriguez, um, visited this um, MST settlement um, and celebrated uh, not only the work of the MST, but also the work that was done by the MST and many other social movements and organizations in Brazil to fight for the freedom of Lula da Silva. So in um, 2018, Lula was imprisoned on false charges over corruption and the MST and many other movements held a vigil every single day outside of the prison demanding his release, demanding that he be freed and that the charges be dropped. Following the Organic Rice uh, Festival, Lula uh, celebrated all of those people that organized this vigil and he also, along with MST, launched um, the base committees of the movements. And so this year is an election year. It's very important to uh, remember this. Lula is not officially a candidate yet because the candidate registration has not happened, but he is most likely going to be the presidential candidate for the Workers' Party of Brazil. And so many uh, social movements, people's movements across the country are going to be working so that uh, Lula can be a candidate, making sure that his political rights are respected. Um, in 2018, they were not respected. He was not able to be a candidate. So there's going to be a large push to make sure that this candidacy happens. But people are going to be organizing and mobilizing on, a, on the community level to make sure that the dreams, the aspirations, and the desires of all people in Brazil are reflected into a proposal for the country. And this is not only um, about who gets elected president, but it's about transforming the country. The last couple of years under the Jair Bolsonaro government, there has been a severe setback in the quality of life for Brazilians. Uh, the poverty levels have drastically rised. Hunger, which before Lula da Silva, when he was uh, president, had managed to almost eradicate in the country because of many different social programs that he developed and that were continued by Dilma Rousseff, also from the Workers' Party. Uh, however, under Jair Bolsonaro, uh, hunger has returned to Brazil. There is very high levels of unemployment. The Brazilian currency has significantly devalued, which of course has many fold uh, impacts on the Brazilian economy. So right now, people are really focused on organizing once again, now that the pandemic has slightly abated, the vaccination rates are high, people are beginning to organize on a community level around the project of country that Lula is presenting, but also organizing their communities and strengthening the grassroots organizing and making sure that what happened in 2018 when Jair Bolsonaro through WhatsApp, through social media was able to 
disseminate so many fake messages about um, the other candidates, about what would happen to Brazil if the Workers' Party candidate Fernando Haddad was elected, um, that all of these be combated with more organization at the base, more organization like how um, the MST organizes, working with people directly in their communities, providing them what they need. And so this is a very important moment for Brazil. We see this in the strengthening of the work of the MST. We see people's movements coming together and dreaming of a new country because this is so desperately needed in Brazil right now. I think the, the MST has presented um, and has worked for creating a new model of society of where people can get healthy food, of where they can have dignified homes, where they can have dignified um, lives. And so this is what people are working towards. It is going to be a crucial year. There's no clear candidate from the far right, from the even from the moderate right currently. Um, there's no standout candidates. It's going to be an interesting year. Um, Lula is the favorite in these elections. He's polling the highest currently. So it'll be interesting to see how this pans out. But I think this past weekend in Londrina, in Rio Grande do Sul, with these celebrations of the movement and of the work of the people's movements, it's giving a breath of fresh air back into political life, engaging people at the base in the community level and reviving all of this very important work that is done um, by the Brazilian people to save the country. Thank you.